next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put powder in. The reason I'm powdering it is that uh, later on I'll be using uh, glue, contact glues, and what I don't want to do is glue the shoe onto the last. And also when you just, you can see how tight I'm going to last it. It won't come out easily if it hasn't got powder. So I put the powder there and just drop it on onto the upper. Okay. By the way, so you can see that uh, always check if there's a dog ear or a tab on it it's going to the medial side. Just a <laughs> last check because once you've done this you start to shape your upper. It's not going to... Uh, um, it's too late if you turn it into a left and it's actually a right. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm leaving the back height above the cone. See that? And what I want to do is get a, a lot of tension. And there's two reasons I want to get a lot of tension. A is I want it to conform and fit the last exactly, which it won't do unless there's a lot of tension. And also I want the tension to form a really strong bond between the stiffener and the upper and the stiffener and the lining. And the tension will force the paste right through the whole lot. Okay, so Emily with her patterns giving me a nice little silver line down the middle. And make sure the back seam is coming down the back of the cone. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just put one rivet, one of these one inch 18 gauge rivets. Pull the lining first. Pull the lining first to make sure there's more tension on the lining than the upper. And then just pull it right over. It might actually come down at this stage further than it will eventually be. And I just put a rivet in and knock it over. See how that, that's bent over there? And then one pulling on the outside and the inside. Pull the lateral. So I'm bending it over. I just put these in and take them out. So lining first, upper just to make sure you got more tension on the lining than the upper and then pull it. The reason I'm doing it on my lap rather than on a post is I can keep turning it over. See how the Emily's patterns are so good. Three rivets and it's sitting on there. Okay, And she's got the toe cap in exactly the right. But supposing I had an apron and a walled last because I'm working on my lats I can keep turning it and pulling it to make sure it's in the right place. Um, so what I want to do now is now I see that tension there. It's actually overhanging the back of the last. So you can imagine when I start pulling it, you can imagine the tension that's on that. Okay. That's really, really important to get a very, very strong back tension on the, on the clip. Okay, so I can just see the pen mark at 63 mil that I drew earlier. So what I'm going to do is, this is, by the way, this is a mirror-faced hammer. Okay, so I've got my strop, I got my knife, and I got my mirror face, and I can shave. See that? So never use a hammer that doesn't have a mirror face on leather, because of course every time you hit it, it'll leave whatever marks on the on the, the face. Because it's a mirror, it actually smooths it out. And what I do is I put a single rivet in there to make sure it comes doesn't come down. Okay, so if you want to know whether a shoe's been hand lasted, look inside and you'll see a little tiny hole through the lining that says it's been hand lasted. And this is a bone. I can start to mold and shape the stiffener while it's mellow. really important thing that you can do with a, a leather stiffener that you can't do with a, any other. It's because it's wet and it's, it's molded, sorry, it's wet and it's mellow, it can all be twisted and turned like that. Okay, so there it is. There's three rivets, one, two, three, and it's sitting on there. Uh, we often leave a piece of lining up on the tongue just to give that a tug. See, it's just pulled some of that there, just to make sure the uh, tongue doesn't come down. But again, Emily's pattern cutting is so good. 
It's just sitting on there with three rivets. We're at the Shoemakers Conference the weekend, and we're talking, and some of the other guys, they just have standard patterns. So they get out a pattern for a derby. Oh, that'll do. Whereas we spend, you know, spend about an hour making an individual pattern for each last. Because when it's sit, if it's sitting on the last like that, that means there's no tensions. Sometimes you pull the last out and it creases, and the reason it creases is you've had to pull the last around to get it to fit the last. So we pull the upper around to get it to fit the last, and then when you take the last out, the upper remembers its original shape and goes into that and forms a twist. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working around. See, there's the, the, the stiffener, it's just curling around the feather line. And uh, so pull on, the, uh, pull on the lining ever so slightly tighter than the upper. And the reason you do that is you pull on the lining and it curls it over. If you pull on the upper more than the lining, it'll come back like that. Can you see that? If you pull on the lining more than the upper, it'll curve in like that. Simple as that. Pull on the lining, upper too hard, it goes like that. Pull on the lining more than the upper and it curls into the last. So when I pull there, you can see, see that on the camera? It's tensioning it. If I pull on the upper instead, it pulls it away from the last. So that's why you always pull on the lining, get your tension on your lining, and then lay the upper down. Don't put a lot of tension on the upper. So this is your rivet. Don't go into the feather line. Don't go, go about six mil behind the feather line. That allows the leather to come flat. Okay. The difference between a, a rivet and a tack is A means 26 mil. It means you can hit it without squashing your thumb and forefinger. You can then get glue under there because you can lift it up because the, the rivet's long enough to uh, allow the glue to go under. And then when you go to bash it down, as it comes over, it takes the leather with it. See what I'm saying? It's sticking up and there's the leather around it. As it bends over, it pulls the leather with it. Whereas with the last tack, it goes, just goes straight down, holds it flat, you squish your thumb and forefinger, you can't get it back up to get the glue under it, and also, by the time you've got your finger out of the way, the leather's retracted a bit. Whereas this does the opposite. Okay, so pull on the lining. Each time, what I've got to do is get these, see, it's going to get all these pucker marks out. What I want to do is gather the pucker with each rivet so that it's so small that it flattens out. So a little bit of pucker between those two. A little bit of pucker. Can you see that in the camera, Elizabeth? Yep. You all right? Do you want me to move around? No, I'm all right. I think I can see. And just tap it down there. Always just pull on the lining and then lay down, bending the rivets a little as I. It's not, intent not intended to do that. These rivets, by the way, until about 20 years ago, you could get them made in pure iron and they were really bendy, but these are st steel simply because of the decline in the uh, in the industry as a whole you know, they're not specifically making iron rivets okay so you see what I've done is I've actually turned the corner and forced all of the puckers So instead of the, the, it forming a pucker like a wave, I've actually compressed the leather sideways so that it's gone flat. And see that really neat uh, feather line you're getting on the heel. Okay, that'd be really difficult to do with last tacking uh, unless 
you know, you, you know, you're really uh, expert at it. So I'm immediately going to go to the other side because I don't want to create an imbalance. Just making sure that that back seam is coming down the middle of the cone. And I'm going to just go the other way. So just the same thing. Notice how I have to turn the the last and because I'm right-handed. Um, or whichever handed you are, you've got to do one, you do one with the toe towards you and the one with the toe away from you. So just a bit more tension. You see how it's tightening up there when I pull on the lining? And then just lay the upper down. If you have somebody with a glue allergy, these uh, shoemakers paste, nobody's allergic to them because they're basically just starch. And you could just fill all this with uh, paste, lay the rivets down, and let it dry for two or three days. Um, but we, we're going to use a, uh, a neoprene adhesive because uh, it uh, dries more quickly. Okay. Now, as I come down the waist, I've got to remember what kind of waist it is because if it's a bevel's waist, like if this was a really fine lady's court shoe, I'd want to keep well in because of the the waist of the, the sole will be quite small and slender. But this, uh, this one's got a square waist, so I'll keep fairly, I'll just keep the standard six mil in. So I don't need to uh, have the rivet so close down here because I'm not turning a corner. there. So get it really nice and snug under the arch. So pull it really, pull it around and notice the technique. You pull with the up, with the lasting pin. So you hold it, press the rivet with your finger and the, the upper won't slip by the time you're able to push to give the, the rivet a, a hit. Okay, so I just got it to there. Later on I'm going to have to put side linings in. But see how much leather, surplus leather there is. So this is where I'm going to um, trim the skirt. Just uh, pull it around. So again, maybe six to eight mil, depending on the substance of the leather, six to eight mil in from the rivet. Good. Okay, and then using the heel of the knife or Conversely, using the the bone, these are plastic bones. You get them from Aljo's, about 50p each. So I'm just lifting it up. So I want to get the the glue right under those rivets. So see how the I'll be able to get the glue in. We've got the lining. In between the lining, we've got the stiffener, and then the upper all impaled by the 1 inch 18 gauge rivets, 26 1.2 millimeter rivets. And you can see as I begin to close these rivets down, it's going to tighten down on the uh, leather of the upper and the lining and the stiffener. But what I want to do first is I want to get layers of neoprene. And as I say, this is the Germ German Rhenia non-toxic <coughs> solvent uh, so I can use it out in the open here without the uh, glue extractors. It's got a longer opening time 
and you have to be more careful how you do it. Uh, but it um, it's just as good if it's more difficult to use, um, which is why they make the toxic one. But if you do it properly, it's just as strong. To make sure I get want to get the glue right over all of the inner inside of the lining and against the insole. Then using the heat gun. Quickly dry all that, and then using just so you can see, using <laughs> the back of the knife, I'm just pulling down on the the lining. <coughs> see, getting it to lie flat. Can you see all that? So obviously I wouldn't be working like this in my workshop or I'd have to go to the chiropractor once a week, but for you, the sake of making a good movie, <laughs> you know, people do anything to get into the movies, even make a pair of shoes standing upside down. Okay, so see how that's flat there, and that's also what one of the heel, you know, the, the wedge, it's not for eliminating Trotsky, it's for doing this. See how it can really get a good push in with the uh, wedge bit of the hammer. So then now you can see the, uh, the, the stiffener, how I got a really nice thin layer of stiffener up there, but that's full of paste, so I should be able to uh, lay that down. Otherwise I could uh, put more neoprene in but hopefully the paste will hold that in place. So I'm just put, making sure the stiffener's lined down in there. And then more neoprene between the lining and the upper. This shoe eventually will be stitched. The, uh, will be stitched down through the upper and the lining. So but some shoes you have to absolutely re rely on this bond to hold the shoe together. Is that coming up all right, Elizabeth, in the film? Yep. Yep, good. Okay. So, again, another application of the heat gun. Now what I do, just because I don't like wasting rivets, not because I'm cheapskate, but it's also, once they're bent over, it's difficult, more difficult to get them out. I lay these ones down, and I take the, these, these rivets out, and you can usually see how easily they come out uh, on the straight. But I don't do that on the curved bit, because uh, you'll see why in a minute. So I can now not like that. But using the, the hammer of the lasting, don't use the mirror face, I begin to push this like a little cage. Begin to tap it over. See how they're all coming in at the same time? See how as they come over, they're pulling the upper with it. Okay, so begin to lie them right down. can do is uh, see if you uh, zero in see how there's a little ridge between those two if I wanted to put a rivet between them and flatten that where I get absolutely flat you'll see what I want to make sure keep checking is sometimes the pressure of lasting up can bring this down, so make sure sometimes the force is so strong it'll sort of have the, the rivet going sideways. Um, 
generally that's uh, pretty flat. There's a couple I'd want to. I'll edit that one out. Start again. <laughs> it's amazing what you can do with an editing program. Okay, and uh, just a couple of ridges I want to flatten now. I want to get rid of that one too. No, that's flattened of its own accord. That one there. That keeps coming up, so I'll put one in there. Good, so there you've got a really nice flat seat and you've got a quite a nice crisp line. So what I'm going to do now is, you saw the uh, uh, stiffener is, is about two and a half mil thick soft leather. So by gently working it, see I can bed that seam into the stiffener and it uh, and using the bone so I'm literally sculpting see that little crease there I can get that out and the uh, stiffener is very mellow inside between the layers and I can just uh, begin to shape it you know feel that see if there's a bump there get rid of that it's because the thing has come around and taken on a cone shape. It, uh, and as I'm doing this, I'm also working the paste into the, into the material. The other thing is, particularly if you're doing a, a you know, really nice covered heel, like a high heel, you want to have a nice flat seat to get your heel on so you can get a really smooth line around there. So this seat line is really important, that you get it so that seen from end it's nice and flat. 